Here's the disclaimer. This is for educational purposes only. This is not financial advice. Cryptocurrencies are risky. Do your due diligence and invest at your own risk. You can lose money. What's up everybody? I wanted to do a short little video today about the bloodbath that everybody's talking about in the cryptocurrency space. So what I mean is, of course, a lot of the cryptocurrencies are coming down. You know, if you look at stories all over the web and on YouTube, you'll see a lot of people, crypto bloodbath, crypto bloodbath. You'll see everybody's talking about these the bloodbath that's happening as far as the price of um, a lot of cryptocurrencies going down. Uh, you'll see news articles in Bloomberg, like how cryptocurrencies are getting crushed or the cryptocurrencies collapsed. You know, a CNBC, a case for investors sticking out the volatility. So there's at least some news, but for the most part, what people are like, why, why, why? You know, especially if you've invested a lot of your money in here, you've kind of missed the run. And let me show you why. If we go to CoinMarketCap, right? CoinMarketCap.com. If you go there and you click the top of the bar up here where you see the market cap right here, Look at this run. Look at 2013. Look at 2016. We have a steady little U going. Just a steady little slope. A little spike here, but a steady little slope. And then it's starting to build momentum. We're talking January 2017. So the beginning of this year, you start seeing momentum, momentum. When everybody starts getting their, their checks, tax checks, we start seeing, you know, March is April. You start getting your tax, tax checks in. Look at the jump. Look at this surge in how much market cap. We were only at, right here, you're only at, I like to use December. December, look at the market cap. 15, 16. You know, for the most part, 4 million, 2016, 7, 8. 10, now we're getting the double digits. Look at that, 12. Now all of a sudden a tear and you're at 40, 50, 60, 70, 112 billion, excuse me, not million, billion market cap. That's crazy, right? So now then look at the tank. So what I always like to do is look at where you're, how it went up, if you flip it, you understand where you're going down to. We're gonna come back down these levels because this is hubris in the marketplace. Speculation, complete speculation. All trades, whether it be the financial trades you do at any of your brokerage accounts, whether it be if you're in uh, the forex, foreign exchange, so the Forex, you know, whether you're, you're buying cryptocurrency, it's all speculation, right? So let's look at Ethereum, because uh, I, I made a video yesterday. Let's look at Ethereum. Now I wanna show you the charts I have on um, TradingView. I'm actually gonna be on Coinergy more, but do you see what levels? We're at 2017 now. Do you see the levels in 2017 here? See the levels here? five so this is a month later then but look at the levels all the way back here in 2016 they just gradually went up then jump then jump but then look at the jumps here look at these short hops and now watch these falls bounce 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 so if i'm looking at this i like supports here are my supports. This had a longer run, bouncing up at the top of it and bouncing off this line. These are my uh, my weeklies. There's my monthly. So we broke through the monthly. We're bouncing off this weekly trend, which is here. I'm in the day right now, if, if you're looking at it. And these are the lines I drew out. Here's my month, my um, weekly. Here's my day numbers for where things are trading at the day. But look at this, it bounced off this. Then it goes down here, it's gonna go down here, but it's a short bounce. 
I'm looking in any of this zone right here as my price target for when I'm going to get back in to buy because there's at least some more support here. And if I do drop, I have this support level that says this is a fire sale. At this price point is a fire sale. I'm ready to get back in at this, at this level. At these levels, I'm ready to get back in. But not up here. I'm not buying at this top. So again, look at the global charts. See the spike, the run up, see the come down, see the spike. Around the same time, see the run up, see the come down. It's following the market. So where is it gonna end up? It's gonna end up back, if you flip it back over, it's gonna end up back at supporting levels. People say that the support is here. How is it at supporting levels here? How long did it support itself on days? We're at the day level. We're talking about a few days it bounced here. There's more days where it bounced here and more days that it bounced here. That's probably where the support. Now understand, this has nothing to do with how Ethereum, the, the actual, what Ethereum does. It doesn't change the technology. The technology of Ethereum has not changed. It's still something that I feel is necessary i'm still looking at other um who are there i have to start doing the research on their competition to see okay who's going to be the the competitive who's in this competitive space i believe i heard eos was in the competitive space with them or another um uh coin was in there i'm not exactly sure i have to do my due diligence and actually research more to find out how many uh contract based crypto currencies are out there that's out there so right now it doesn't change the fact that they are the leader in their space for contract crypto as a contract based cryptocurrency so i still feel that this is a good price target right here just to get all this fear out of the marketplace so if you are trading right now if you are trading cryptocurrencies you're looking for sales like if we go over here to let's go back to coin market cap if you're looking here i put the market cap up i go down this list and i'm looking for sales i'm waiting for i'm watching the market go down and i'm looking for sales who's on sale you've got some Decent stuff. I start. I'm gonna start researching these coins. I uh, will be uh, right now. What we're considering is placing a blog on Toxic Hustle to actually put our due diligence of what we found out. It also, is a way for us to have a place to kind of look at what we're looking at. Um, to have a place where we can kind of keep track of any of the news or any highlights that we want to do so we're thinking about a newsletter and, and putting it out there i'll give you more information as we get closer to it i'll know more most likely by the end of the week but just start looking for sales and do your due diligence i'm going to do a video on what i do for my due diligence how i research a trade before i make a trade um even charting how did I come up with my lines of where I buy in, where I'm, how I drew out these lines, which is not that hard. Like none of this is hard. You grab your trend line, you put it on these levels, whether it be day or the week. As you see, I drew out my week lines. And again, you can see here what lines I'm looking at. The blues are my weeks. And then you, I also liked if it has enough information, if, there, if it's been on an exchange long enough, I like the month. And then I can see, hey, where did it bounce on months? And that's where you see my purples. So this way I kind of have a map, a quick map of a trade within a short amount of time. Let's get back 12 hours, four hours. Let's go back to the hourly. Let's go to the day, excuse me. So this at least gives me a, a, a road map of a trade to say, okay, well, here's where the monthly is. Here's where a monthly was when I said, when I thought, hey, if we break through this monthly, it's going to go down pretty sharp. What did it do? Broke through the month and went down pretty sharp. We're now touching a weak number. 
the weekly number right here. So if it breaks through this weekly number, where are we going to end up? And there's not enough history. I mean, it's a little bit, there's a little bit of support here, but there's not, there's, it's going to go down to this, most likely this area right here. There's not enough history for it to be at these levels. This is all speculation and, and, and fear on this side going down. I feel that we're looking at right around here. As you see the day number and the monthly numbers say this is a supporting structure. My day, which is the red line, my month, which is the purple line, is showing me I have some support here at around 75. So at 75, I'm probably back into a buy mode. And here at 50 is a fire sale. Those are, that's just how I look at, that's how I watch it. I watch it and just understand. It's not so much, I don't understand the candlesticks and charting patterns. I'm just looking at this from the psychology of what I, with from, a, from consumers becoming traders. If you are a consumer who became a trader and you're at this level and you thought you were trading here, we everybody else was about getting out. They had already come in at the low and they're selling at the high. So when you came in here at 200 or here at 300 and thought, oh, this is going to the moon. And then everybody was like, all right, we got some profit. Let's leave. Because because everybody else saw the run, the run up. So it didn't make sense to buy anything at this level. It's all now it's like, hey, let's get back to this level here. We're done. We're out. Let's get it back to this level. Now, if it bounces and decides it's going to make a tear back up. I don't know right now you're you know there's getting ready to be some changes getting ready to happen in the ethereum space there's some changes getting ready to happen in august in the bitcoin space with segwit 2 so there's a bunch of uncertainty for the developers and uncertainty equals fear in the marketplace so we're probably going to bounce back on supports i would be looking for sales but i'll try to find as many as i can to help out so right now i want to keep this as a short video but guys there is nothing to be afraid about right now. Now you're looking for sales. I'll try to help you find some. Um, again, this is not investment advice, guys. I am not telling you to not buy something. I'm not telling you to go buy something. I'm saying, hey, this is interesting. So you have to make your own um, decisions. You have to start doing your own due diligence. I will put out videos um, in the next com in the next few days that actually walks through some of my due diligence process, how I'm researching the actual technology that underlines the actual uh, cryptocurrency. I don't buy cryptocurrencies that do nothing. I don't buy cryptocurrencies that don't have a decent development team. I don't buy crypt uh, cryptocurrencies that don't seem like they are first position players or could basically unseat a first position player. At least not for if I'm going to be buying the whole for the long run. Because then I don't care if the trade goes down. Like Ethereum, I didn't care that the trade went down because I wasn't trading the, the, the numbers of the, the currency itself. I knew the technology was still better than anything else out there. They had first position, real a strong first position, and they were the leader in, and still are the leader in the market. So yeah, the price can come down, that's fine. I still have some Ethereum, and that's fine. The price can come down, but it doesn't matter because I know I didn't buy because, oh, I thought it was gonna go to $2,000 like Bitcoin. I real, I'm sitting there going, well, I wanna get some shares of it because when it does run back up, which it will, then I would have something in play and I ca I'm cashing out. I cashed out and kept a little small position in there just in case. But as the, pr uh, the price goes down, I'm just waiting so that I can buy back in. And that's all you're doing is waiting for the lows to then get back in. So guys, don't be fearful about what's going on. Just be smart. This is J Tragic Jeffrey for Toxic Hustle, and this has been Crypto Plunder Episode 2. Stop worrying about the bloodbath. Take it easy, and be safe.